Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm putting this video together because I wanted to do something with all the books I plan on rereading this year. I want to interact with that experience and just share it. Originally my intention was to reread a series a month and make a video at the end of the month about that. However, that's a lot of pressure to put on myself. Some of these series are rather large. I work full time and I volunteer and I have a semblance of a social life. I cannot get through the entire Pendragon series in a month without really pushing myself and stressing myself out in a way I don't want to make this experience. I want it to be fun and exciting and something that I want to keep doing. But the more I thought about it, the more I liked not checking in at the end of every series, but just as I'm going. I want my progress to seem linear through the year instead of halting every month. So what I've decided to do instead is a monthly check-in just to see where I am and to talk about how I feel about rereading these books and whether my opinions have changed. I just want to chat about this uh, project that I'm doing, this goal of rereading something like 11 series through the year instead of prioritizing my TBR or other unread books. So in my 2020 goals video, I said I wanted to read through a bunch of series and the first series I decided to start with was the Artemis Fowl series by Owen Culfer. Now part of this, I wanted a sort of easy entrance into this rereading experience, and as well, I wanted to make sure that I got to the series since the Artemis Fowl movie is supposed to be coming out this year. The more I thought about what order I wanted to do this, whether I wanted to leave it up to mood or I did it according to some other theme or decision, I realized that of all the series I've decided to read, the Artemis Fowl series was also the first one I ever came in contact with as a kid. So I think what I want to do is I want to reread all the series I plan on rereading in the order that I started them. I kind of like that, like sort of growing up with it, rereading it. I, I didn't actually binge every series, you know, on my childhood. These series were still coming out when I was a kid. In January, I got to the first. I have two copies. I don't even know why. I don't remember ever obtaining these books, but I have two copies of the first Artemis Fowl book, which is just simply called Artemis Fowl. And it was really, really fun to get back to the series. I was in grade four, so I was about nine, I guess. And my teacher for the year was the nicest, bestest teacher. It was going to be the best year ever. And then two weeks into the school year, she's like, sorry guys, I'm going to a new school. And she left. I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was drama or she just went to a school that was closer to her house or what. But my elementary school in its infinite wisdom decided, let's not hire another teacher. Let's grab teachers from other programs, cut those programs, and make them share the responsibility of teaching this class. So they grabbed the music teacher and they grabbed the teacher um, whose program was called Reading Recovery. And basically what she did was she helped kids who had a hard time reading, who were just behind, who had learning disabilities, catch up on their reading uh, skills and be successful. What lovely programs to cut. The children don't need music. The children don't need to read. So I had the music teacher in the morning every day for the first half of the day, and then we had the reading recovery teacher for the second half of the day. It was very difficult as little kids <laughs> to have two different teachers. It was just such a weird experience, but I really did come to like both those teachers a lot. And it was nice having the music teacher to ourselves. We got to learn lots of music. It was really unfortunate because that was basically the year that the music program at that school really died. They used to actually teach kids how to play instruments, how to read music, how to all the music things that I don't even know and they stopped doing that pretty much that year. And then the reading recovery teacher would be there from like lunch onward, so she was there for the second half of the day. I don't know whose idea it was. I feel in my head like maybe it was probably the reading recovery teacher's decision. They decided that while we were having our snack time, so we had snack time in the morning before morning recess, and we had snack time in the afternoon before afternoon recess, and during lunch, that they would read to us. And the first book that I remember, anyway, that they decided to read to us was Artemis Fowl. So I got maybe two or three chapters into this book before I came down with chickenpox. But I remember it very vividly because I thought it was really cool. One of the characters is also named Holly. And I remember being like, oh my god, the character has my name. And I was very, very excited. And then I came down with chickenpox. It was right around Halloween. It was a very tragic time for my childhood because I... Uh, couldn't go out for Halloween and go trick-or-treating. Reading recovery teacher actually showed up at my house and gave me a bunch of candy because she felt bad that I couldn't go out for Halloween. I actually saw her at the dog park a couple of weeks ago. I didn't get to say hi, our dogs were both being insane and stuff, but 
it was just so weird. A few years after uh, she taught our class, she went back to being the reading recovery teacher, but she ended up becoming a principal at a school and she was this really, really nice British lady. And she is, in my opinion, one of the most influential people in my life because she was the reason that I started the next series that I'm going to be reading, which is Harry Potter. And that totally, I think, personally, changed the directory of my life. I hated reading before this class. And through all the books that they read to us, and Harry Potter in particular and especially, I became a reader. I wanted to read Harry Potter, and when I ran out of Harry Potter books to read, because they weren't all published yet, we were up to four, I think, by the time I was in grade four, and the movie was coming out that year, it was so exciting. Um, I was like, well, what do I do now? And I read other books. I didn't get back to the Artemis Fowl series, despite this very early introduction to it, until 2010. I was doing a victory lap in high school because I had graduated in June of 2010 and I wasn't ready to go to university, but my parents didn't want me to not be in school. So I went back to high school and just took random extra courses. And that is when I stumbled upon Artemis Fowl. My dad at the time was really into listening to audiobooks. He still does. It's pretty much the reason I listen to them. And he liked to read series that we were into uh, to have something to talk about with us and to keep us interested in reading. And he stumbled upon these and he's like, have you read them? They're really, really good. And, you know, I flashed back to my grade four memory. I'm like, no, I haven't. So I started reading them <laughs> to have something to talk about him with. I was definitely not the target age for these books or a middle grade series, but I still really, really enjoyed them. And they're like, I think it's just a thing maybe middle grade series do, or at least a lot of the ones I've encountered. And the, the writing gets a little more sophisticated with each book. The plot gets a little more sophisticated. Like it's growing up with the kids that started reading it. And this series definitely seems to do that. I got to reread the first book. Despite the first book being a bit more simple and the plot a bit more basic, it was still really, really fun to go back to the series that I remember quite fondly and that I can definitely say held up. The next book that sort of follows in the series, although it was published later, is a little novella called The Seventh Dwarf, and I gave that a read. I had actually, I thought I'd read this, but going through it, I have no memory of reading this. I think I just obtained the book, but I don't think I've ever actually read it before. And it was a cute little story, but the plot doesn't quite actually line up with the series. It's supposed to fall between the first and the second book, but in the following books, there are certain things that just don't line up. Like there's an interaction between Artemis and another character in here, and they say that they haven't seen each other since the events of the first book in following books. So that was kind of weird that it didn't line up. I then got to the second book, which is called The Arctic Incident, and then I did make it through the third book, which is called The Eternity Code. My progress through the series did take a bit of a halt because I started reading some of the Canada Reads books, and my reading always gets interrupted by those books this time of the year. I'm fine with it. It was another one of the reasons I realized I was not going to be finishing this series in January, and that prompted me to change up how I was going to approach this uh, rereading experience. And so I didn't quite make it halfway through this one. So far into rereading these books, I am really enjoying it. It's bringing me as much joy and happiness as it did the first time. I love the characters. I love seeing them develop across the books. As you can see that the author started having plans about where the plot was going. I'd like to clarify, in case anyone doesn't know what the Artemis Fowl series is about, it follows a criminal child genius from Ireland who extorts gold out of the fey people that it turns out live uh, below the surface of the earth and then the adventures that follow from that interaction. It's hilarious. It's got a lot of like children's like obvious humor like bodily humor and stuff but it also has a lot of like sort of dry wit to it and I really appreciate that both types of humor are there because I think some of the humor is definitely more geared towards kids but I think a lot of the dry wit just appeals to adults and older readers so I like that there's a bit of both. I think the series holds up rather well. There's some technology things like it was first published in the early 2000s and the last book came out sometime after 2010 so there are some technology and timely things that don't quite line up, like social media is not a thing. Uh, the technology that seems super crazy impressive in this book kind of can be done by a smartphone now and doesn't seem quite as like mind-bogglingly impossible. The other thing that sort of grates a little bit is there's a lot of, I don't even know what to call it, but one of the main characters named Holly is a elf, she's one of the fae, and she's a recon officer and she's the only female recon officer. In fact, there is only one other female officer in the entire police department and she's regularly described as just a pretty face. She's only got a job because she's pretty and she's 
stupid and ditzy, she's just a bit of a bimbo. Otherwise, Holly is very exceptional because she is not like other girls. I also don't like the female versus female competition that these two officers are kind of pitted against each other. And girls can do anything boys can do. And there's just a lot of that conversation that just seems a bit dated now. Like, I feel like kids grow up, people grow up knowing that girls can do what boys can do. And it feels really weird to hear it repeated again and again in these books. It's just dated. It's something that I think definitely fit in these books at the time, but just sticks out now as something that does not belong. Other than that, so far the series is holding up rather well. I know the plot from what I remember gets a lot more sophisticated and detailed and the characters really grow. Like I think we start seeing Artemis in his teen years. I just want to speak a little bit about what I'm thinking about rereading so far. I'm having a bit of anxiety looking at my TBR thinking I'm gonna wait an entire year before I start tackling those books again. And I'm looking at books at the library and going yeah I'm not gonna read you right now because I have these to do. And while I'm still really excited about this project and I really want to stick to my guns and like follow through on this. I'm also having moments where I'm like, oh, but I could be doing this readathon or I could be doing this. I could be making different videos. And Kayla over on Books and Lala was saying that she doesn't like doing big projects like these because it stifles her creativity to do smaller month to month things. And I kind of feel that right now. There are ideas I have and I don't have the time to do them because I'm doing this. But I'm also really happy to be doing this. I have basically committed myself to rereading a bunch of books that I love, that I know that I love and that I've basically decided to read almost all five star books this year. It's just relaxing and calming and really making me remember why I fell in love with reading in the first place. Especially reading books from a time when reading was just a passive uh, hobby, something I didn't think very hard about, something I just did, something I didn't track or uh, engage with, and to come back to them and engage with them a little bit. Really enjoy that back and forth in my head of being like, this is really fun and easy and I don't have to think too hard and also being able to engage with stuff um, from a time before I was trying to actively engage in reading or in any media, frankly. I'm also really enjoying kind of going back to books I've read and that are on my shelves and getting to touch them and be with them and spend time with them. There's something about objects that you hold on to that you keep that means something to you. All these books are sentimental to me in some way. I did a big unhaul. I got rid of the books that didn't matter to me, that didn't speak to me in some way after I'd read them, that didn't make me want to reread them. So it's this very tangible experience to go back to these objects that have so much sentimental value, that have so much memory and emotional attachment and add more to it. Bring more memories to them, interact with them, be with them. And I I'm just really enjoying that experience a lot. This video has been rambling, but I kind of wanted it to be a bit rambly. I just want to th see where this adventure takes me. I'm really enjoying where I'm going with this. I'm going to be uh, hopefully reading the other Canada Reads books in the next month. However, I am hoping to continue on with the Artemis Fowl series and hopefully, I'm hoping, if I'm really really good, finish them by the end of February and maybe even start into the next series that I plan on reading. Thank you so much for watching and have a really great day!